But look, ladies and gentlemen, you know why we're here. You see the background. Oh my goodness, I am so excited. This is Let's Talk College Football. And, and uh, real quick, it, it couldn't have worked any better. We talked about this off camera. If you see over in that little corner, there's that little uh, M right over yeah. here, that little connector. Oh, that <laughs> oh my goodness, man. This this is going to be an itch. I, I know you guys are excited about this here. There's a lot going on. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. and, uh, so top 25. Now, now, there is no official top 25 right now, but there have been a lot of people putting out predictions um, and kind of getting us ready for it. Kate sent us, what is this, uh, through NCA.com, their projection. I'm going to go through real quick just the uh, top, about top 10, top 15. So we got right there, their projection is for Alabama at one, Ohio State at two, Georgia, the defending champs at three, Texas a and at four, Notre Dame five, Utah six, Clemson seven, Oklahoma State eight, Michigan at nine, and Wake Forest at 10. I mean, let's start there. Top 10, are, are there any surprises or anything? Like, you guys are at nine. How do you feel about you guys being so low? I think we need to be higher. I think we yep. need to be at, like, at least six. At mm. least six. Yep. Maybe five. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with that. I'd put – uh, Georgia, Alabama, Ohio State, and Texas A&M above us to start. Mm -hmm. And then I personally think we're better than Notre Dame right now. I do too. I think we're definitely better than Utah. I think we're definitely better than Clemson, especially mm -hmm. the way Clemson looked last year. I don't well, think they, they deserve awful. to be in the top 10. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Oklahoma State's a damn good football team, but – I, I think we're above Oklahoma State, above Clemson, above Utah, and above Notre Dame. So, to me, we're five. Right. Right. And, and, but, and I, you know, we wear these shirts that say Michigan versus everybody. So, uh -huh. it's always Michigan versus everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, what surprised me, in, in my opinion, um, Texas A&M, like, I understand what they did a year ago. I understand that they beat – um, Alabama, but at the same time, that I thought was a little high for me. I mean, maybe five or six. I wouldn't put you guys maybe over them, but Notre Dame with the new coach, I kind of want to see. They lost uh, some some serious pieces, but they do have baby Gronk. We're going to talk about him a little later at their yeah. tight end position. Yeah. So, you know, they have some weapons that they can definitely work with. I, I'm kind of fine with them. Utah had a great year last year. You know, and that's yep. why I believe, you know, they're projected higher, but they have a couple people coming back, but they also had a couple people they lost. So I can see you guys higher, definitely over Clemson. And that might be an yeah. ACC bias of mine. Yeah. You guys, Clemson did not show me anything last year. You know, and you lost, lost both your coordinators. Right. And they did. So, so did I, we, but any, but that's a different story. But Clemson didn't ball out like they usually do. Yeah. They struggled a they lot. They struggled last year. big time. Yeah. And then it started with their quarterback, DJ Ugalele. He he just wasn't, he just looked like he was kind of shell shocked at times. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and it, you know, in that first game, when they played Georgia, I, I was like, oh, is he this bad? But no, we didn't realize Georgia was that good. But then yeah. he's also through all throughout the ACC, like, you know, losing to NC State. You know what I mean? Losing right. certain games, it was it was. He didn't show me what he needed to, to have them this high. They do have a lot of talent, but right, losing their coach and everything that's. Uh, I don't Especially know. Brent Venables, <clears throat> yeah, that is a huge loss for that defense. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely I agree with uh, Oklahoma State and uh, Wake Forest at ten. I like. I'm that. okay with that. Yeah, I, I, I really like that's, that. That's that's a that's going to be a fun team to watch. Yeah, they've got one of the yeah. most underrated quarterbacks in the nation in Sam Hartman. Yeah, absolutely, like, absolutely. This guy's a baller, you know. And 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 <laughs> I I think I think it a dark horse, an early dark horse for a Heisman hopeful if he had the kind of season he had from a year ago. Yeah, because he had forty two hundred yards and thirty nine touchdowns last year. Exactly. Like that's incredible. He, yeah, like nobody does that at a school like Wake Forest. Like. <laughs> No, and he's he's pulling it off and playing very well. Uh, they went unranked, and then as soon as Hartman got in there, they won eight straight. Yep. So, 
I mean that that says something about the guy right there. Like, yeah. and he like wants to do it again. Go ahead, Katie. Yeah, that's gonna be a fun game. Do they play um, North Carolina, Sean? <laughs> yes, yes, I I believe they do. Let me check the date real quick. I have uh, November twelfth. November twelfth, we go to uh, Wake Forest. I I don't know. That I really want to go ahead and get into my team thus far because we, uh, but that's lost gonna be my a guy. Fun one to watch. <laughs> it will, it will, if not for anything else. Um, but to see always uh, AC, ACC matchups are always solid, and we have some yeah. a returning receiver, Josh Downs, that um balled out a year ago. Now, because of it was because of Sam Powell, that was a large part of it, but we do have some guys coming, and I, I, I got full faith in our coach. All right, Mac yeah. Brown's a guy, Mac yeah. Brown's a guy, absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, is there anybody in that we've seen their their kind of top ten? Is there anybody that that is maybe not in here that maybe should be, in your opinion? I think Kate's got one that we'll probably both agree on here, but I'll let her throw hers out. Ooh, who the who I think should be in the top yeah. ten? Yeah. Oh, I'm looking beyond where they have other teams ranked. Mm-hmm. And I'm kind of excited to see what Houston does. Yep. Oh, I agree with that, actually. Yeah. Oh, wow. wow. That's yeah. the one team that I think are going to really surprise us this season. Yeah, I feel like they might run away with that American Conference this year. Mm-hmm. I yeah, agree. It's, it's going to be either them or Cincinnati. I would mm-hmm. rank them higher. Yep. Yeah. You could, to me, you could also make an argument for Baylor. Right. Uh, yep. As as much as I hate to say it as a Michigan fan, Michigan State could very there easily. Go. They're they're a top ten team in the nation. They right. ask me like, no. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like to me, those two or three teams right there are the the only other teams to me you can make an argument for in the top ten. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Would you Would you look at um Would you look at an NC State who brings back Leary, brings back a couple of the wide receivers, has uh, you know, a top five uh, old lineman. W- would you look at the uh, NC State and see maybe they go at ten? Uh, yeah, you can make the argument for them at ten. I still like them in that eleven to fifteen range mm-hmm. because I think Michigan State's a better team. Uh, Houston to me is a better team, but you could go either way with that one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but NC State is a very good football team, and they're going to do a yeah. lot of damage this year. I think oh, yeah. NC State has a good chance of being number one in the ACC at the end of the college football season. Ooh, ooh, I like I that. Do, I like that. <laughs> I like that a lot. I think they're okay. going to really show everyone what they're made of this season. Yeah. They, have, they have great talent, a good coach. And yeah. the elephant in the room, North Carolina is probably going to have a down year. That's why they're going to do well. Like, like, hey, I'm still a North <laughs> Carolina guy. All right. Well, Okay, here's my question for you, though. What do you consider a down year? Is it because he lost Sam Howell? That's a down year. There it is. There is the answer. I mean, you've got, you've got like, a <laughs> top still, six or seven receiver. Like, you know, there's still we, good talent You there. still have exactly. a stack and, and, and we actually had top-tier recruits yeah. that we've gotten, a number yep. of five stars, a couple four stars. So I, we can all – we are one of the more underrated teams that does reload – um, Absolutely. Mac has, has that offense, right. has that team going. So, I, oh, yeah, I definitely think we're going to bring it. But you, come on, Alex. You saw how excited I have been and how excited yeah. I got once I got Sam Howell. It is all that is the interview. That's the only thing we talked about in the offseason oh, yeah. was Sam Howell. So, uh, you know, there it is. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, that that's a tough player to replace. Sam Howell yeah. was so good at the college. He was level. a very good quarterback. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Great leader on the field, kept his team composed. And did whatever it took to win. Yeah. And, and yeah, necessary. that's the yeah. one thing about losing the college football players is like losing that leadership in the teams and yep. everything. And Sam Howell was a great leader. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So look, so we're gonna go from so about from 15, and they have NC State, Houston. We talked about Arkansas. Who uh, a lot of team, a lot of people are kind of talking. I think they're sleeping on Kentucky. Another one of those. Iowa. Shout out to uh, uh, Ash Swinton. Oklahoma at twenty. Yeah. USC. A lot of people think it's going to be a turnaround at twenty-one. 
22 BYU. Yeah, right now. Right. Uh, Wisconsin at 23, Tennessee at 24, and Cincinnati at 25 on this list. Um, I, I kind of agree with that. I agree with that. USC was one of the teams that that you know has got a lot of talk in the off season, but let's let's prove it on the field first. You know what I mean? Let's I think see how the yeah. system works. They have every right to be in the top twenty five, and it'll yeah. be. I'll be curious to see what Lincoln Riley does with that team this season. I have them on my team to watch list. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I don't usually pay attention a lot to the Pac-12, but I definitely will be making some late-night arrangements to stay up and watch some of those games just to oh, see yeah. how well they do. Oh, yeah. Well, you've got one of the better coaches in college football. You've got one of the better quarterbacks. You've got probably the second-best receiver in college football this year. Like, they're going to do a lot of damage offensively. It's just when you play these teams like – Oregon and Utah in the Pac-12 that know how to score the ball at will. Right. It's going to make the games interesting, but are they going to lose a lot of 45 to 42 games this year? Like, Right. Right. The games are going to be close. I have a feeling yep. that we're going to see a lot of surprises from Lincoln Riley out there. Oh, absolutely. And he's going to turn that program around. And the question yep. will be about his de- about the defense. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. You know, because they, they, like you said, there's a lot of high, high-powered offenses going on out there. So it, it's going to be interesting to see. But I, I think this is the, the right place. I, mm-hmm. I do want to see what kind of offensive production they do because it's going to be quite interesting with Caleb Williams now. They also got a uh, big-name wide receiver. Jordan you know, Addison. Jordan Addison, yeah. right, out of pit. So yeah. that, that, in my opinion, is obviously on paper is a great one-two punch. But they let's let's see what they do on the field against some of these other squads. Um, Anthony in the comments was saying Tennessee has the potential to do some damage. Yes. I completely agree. I completely yeah. agree. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I mean, think I, we can see Tennessee ranked this year very easily. Like, they've got right. one of the better quarterbacks that's available for the draft. Uh, it's not often you see a Tennessee player in the Heisman betting odds. Mm-hmm. And Hendon Hooker, their quarterback, is up there a little bit. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, they could definitely do some damage this year. Yeah, and then he's getting back his top receiver, Cedric Tillman. Yeah, he's a, a very good. Yards. He's a good receiver. Exactly. So, and and look, I I honestly think that you know they're in that SEC, which is obviously tough. They had to go up against yeah. a couple of the powerhouses, but I I loved what I saw with Hendon Hooker a year ago with that fast paced mm-hmm. offense, and I do think it. I it, you know they got a couple guys. I I really think they can work it out this year. They need to. Um, to keep pace, but with maybe Georgia being down a little bit, I don't know how far they step back, but I think they can get a stick to steal one of those in there. They can steal one of those, and oh, yeah, uh, you know, maybe a little does that make me crazy? Um, but yeah, I'll so- be curious to see what Wisconsin does this year. I think they're gonna be one of those surprises in the Big Ten. Hmm. They're and to me, at some point this year, they will be a top 10 team in the nation. Oh, definitely. You've got- that offensive line, they're always loaded on defense. You've got that young running back, Braylon Allen, coming in, who's going to – I think he's going to light up the league. Like, Oh, definitely. Uh, he's an early uh, early Heisman contention I've seen. I've seen yes. a lot of, you know. It's so, yeah. Wisconsin's going to be a very dangerous team. Uh, them and Iowa, again, for the Big Ten West. Um, it's those two every year. Yeah. I don't really see that changing this year, so – which they're uh, looking at shaking up the divisions in the Big Ten. They, they don't should. think they're fair and they're fairly not. matched. <laughs> so we'll see what happens there throughout the season, if they do it this season or if they wait, if they'll get it done before. But, yeah, they're looking at shaking up the divisions in the Big Ten or not even having divisions. Hmm. So that would we'll be see. interesting. That would well, be. So we'll have to wait and see. Yeah. Because let's face it, that Big Ten championship game was quite lopsided against Iowa. Michigan, Ohio State was that Big Ten conference. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, it yeah. was. You've got four teams in the East that would beat the two teams in the West, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah. And, like, not in the top 25, a team I'm going to be surprised to see what they do is LSU with Kelly as their coach. Hmm. And Jaden Daniels is the quarterback. They've got two – potential top 10 receivers, two potential top 10 corners. Like yeah. There's still talent all over that team. Right. 
Oh yeah. Well. That's the one team I'm going to be watching too to see what Kelly can do to them because he really was a good coach at Notre Dame. Hmm. I wonder if you might get shell shocked in the SEC though. He's oh, that's never really in- done well against those SEC teams. So, yeah, a lot of people definitely think that transition is some, sometimes too much for coaches to bear because you know yeah, going right. up against them week after week after week, you know. It can be a lot. Yeah, the oh, SEC is a brutal conference in the Power yeah. Five. But, yeah. but talking about them, I, I you know, I, I really, I think we need to spotlight as um, Kentucky, and they're, you yes. know, they're in oh, North, definitely with having Will Slovis uh, back, with having that running back uh, Rodriguez. I honestly think they look. They were shocking people because they were staying in games. They were up saying knocked out uh, Florida a year ago. Like, yeah, they they really played. A solid ball, and I I think they might have built on something. Well, you you, you guys agree on that, or what you think? Oh, I oh, definitely absolutely. think they have some potential to be dangerous. Definitely. Yeah. yeah, like you said, they've got talent all over the board, and again, it's the SEC, so yeah. you know they they'll go beat most teams from other conferences, even though they'll be well, even if they're like fourth, <laughs> fifth, sixth in the conference, like. And they have a really good running back in Chris Rodriguez Jr. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very I'm good running the back. Quarterbacks. I'm forgetting the quarterback's name right now, but he's – Will Levis. He's, yes. He's going to be right up there with some of these top quarterbacks and come mm-hmm. draft time next year. No, absolutely. Absolutely. And and I, and, and he showed it He showed it in, 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 in uh, moments a year ago, and yeah. I think he's going to be able to get it consistently this year. Um, so, you know, we'll go ahead. We'll take a look. Um, but outside of top 25, Katie, you mentioned uh, LSU. Mm-hmm. Um, Alex, is there anybody that you're looking at outside of the top 25 that you're like, who they might shock us? There's a couple of these Big Ten teams I've been looking at, and there's a couple sleepers that I feel are going to do a lot better than everyone thinks. Mm-hmm. And to me, that's Maryland and Rutgers. Hmm. Is Maryland's got Talia Tagovailoa. Yeah. Who's a little too backyard footballish for some people. He's entertaining as hell to watch. Mm-hmm. You got two top ten receivers. You got Raheem Jarrett and uh, Dante Demas. You got good, like good offensive line, good defensive line. They're they're gonna scare a lot of people this year. Probably walk away with seven, eight wins and be in be in a good bowl game. Hmm. And then okay. Rutgers is Graciano. He's a He's an amazing college football coach. Yep. Yes, uh, he is. He's building something special there at Rutgers. He he went toe to toe with a lot of those powerhouse Big Ten teams last year. Took them yep. down to the wire. So, uh, we were talking about Kentucky and some of those teams maybe stealing a few games. Look for Rutgers to steal some from Michigan, Michigan State, Ohio State, Penn State. Like, look for them to steal at least one of those four. Oh yeah. Oh, I like that. I like that. Katie, what do you think? Um. I also like to follow interstate rivalries that we have. And <laughs> I think like CMU, like as a Mac school might surprise a yes. lot of people. They, yes. yes. They, I mean, they have a really good coach in McElwain. So I think they're going to do some surprising things and we'll see what happens with them because they got a lot of good recruits in the off season. And yeah. so I'm, Curious to see what good old the good old chips do. Mm-hmm. Fire up chips and that Lou Nichols, their running back Lou Nichols, yeah, uh, is, is, mm-hmm. is a monster. He he yep. actually led the the country in all purpose yards last year with like what twenty one hundred you know yards and balled out. So this guy plays. He is you know that offense and and hey and that and the Mac. I think he could do something. I, I'm interested to see what they do. Yeah. Out. I, lo- I follow the map quite a bit in sports, so and I like watching CMU play football, so I'm yeah. excited to see what they have to offer this Shiano's, season. Shiano's a solid college football coach at best. He's uh, the best 500 coach in NFL history. He gets those guys ran- amped up, I'll tell you that. Yeah, and like we can agree to disagree on that because uh, numbers only tell half the story. Yeah. Right. Like, yep. to me, watching Rutgers compete in games they should have no business being in, mm-hmm. to me, that's enough to push him up to that next tier. He's not 
he's like that third tier of coaches right mm-hmm. now in college football. Like I'm not, I'm not saying he's up there with the Sabins and Kirby Smarts of the world. He's nowhere near those guys. No, but he's definitely that third tier. Like he could be coaching at a much better school right now if he wanted to. Oh yeah. No, I mean. Alex and I's team lost some big coaches too this season. So mm. we lost our offensive coordinator and our defensive coordinator. Yeah. And I like the hires that Michigan did to bring things back together. So coaching yeah. just can be good. Yeah. Well, and speaking of Gaddis going, that was another team. And I saw the comment from Zagnif there. Miami's one that I want to keep an eye on too because Van Mario Dyke. Cristobal, Josh Gaddis, you got Tyler Absolutely. Van Dyke there. Absolutely. That, that's going to be a fun team to watch this year. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I I love the early Heisman hype, and we will definitely talk about that in just a second. But I absolutely, with Cristobal going back there, and we, we saw what he did a year ago over at Oregon, and had, you know, they upset the team that you guys uh, don't like to name. Uh, <laughs> did, did you guys a favor? I was so but, happy that day. Oh, oh, I know. <laughs> I, I know. So, so happy. <laughs> But they, you know, he had, you know, back-to-back Pac-12 championships. He dominated out there. And then to come back and get the job that he wanted. And the biggest thing about it, and I I love that, uh, uh, Anthony, that you mentioned that, Miami, with Crystal Ball being there, the number one thing he did at the spring game, everybody come back. All you, Ed Reed, McKinney, all you guys, everybody come back, get on the sideline, talk to these guys, bring back the you. You know what yes. I mean? Bring back that fire, bring back that intensity, that swagger. And uh, I'm excited to see what they do. I, I I think Van Dyke showed some signs a year ago, and uh, we know what kind of coach Cristobal is, all business. And uh, this next year is going to show something. Miami's well, I, always been a fun and exciting team to watch, so I'm excited to see what they do. Mm-hmm. Well, and the thing with Cristobal, too, is – and Miami. Miami's never had a problem recruiting these skill guys. The quarterbacks, never. running backs, receivers, oh, yeah. DBs. The one thing they've struggled to get is those trench guys, the offensive and defensive lines. That's Cristobal's recruiting specialty. Exactly. That's why you saw Panay Sewell and all these other guys from Oregon that are getting drafted and playing well in the NFL is Cristobal knows how to scout those big guys. So mm-hmm. uh, Miami can go get all those skill guys, and then Cristobal can work on these big guys. Yeah. Miami can be very special in the next couple of years. Could be back to what people used to expect from them. I re- oh, yeah. I miss them kind of being in the top ten, top five considerations, and yeah, they've always been one of those like lightning fast teams, and you're just like excited yeah. to watch them. They had such a swagger. Talk about those eighties, early nineties teams, and then that 0-1 team was arguably one of the oh. greatest teams of all time. I mean, what was it, like 17 or 18 players in the first round alone? You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> How many Hall of admit, Famers was on that team? I've owned you know. some Miami Hurricane swagger. Oh, yeah. I've yeah, had some swag. I would rock to you. I, I, I love the Oh, game, yeah. No doubt about it. But I, I'm definitely eager to see what they bring back this season. And, and to your point, Alex, for those of you who don't know, Crystal Ball, I know he's slimmed down now, but Crystal Ball was on lineman. You know what I mean? He was in the trenches. He was a part of their 89 and 91 national championship teams. He knows what it takes to win. He knows what it's like to be a big guy, to be, you know, in the trenches and things of that nature. So I, I I love him being back there. And that's, that's something I'm very excited about as far as being in the ACC. So I like, yeah, the ACC is going to be fun to watch. Oh yeah. Very fun. Oh yeah. Very fun. Oh, yeah. So we will definitely see what is going to happen. Thanks for watching. If you like that clip, be sure to check out the other great content from the Let's Talk Football community. And as always, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you'll be notified when more great content like this becomes available.